Over the years, you might have seen a number of studies called urban metabolism studies, material flow studies, circularity studies or cir circular scan studies throughout many academic studies, but also uh, produced by consultancy firms. In this video, I want to show you how you can do them and what are the five essential steps to carry, uh, to carry out one urban metabolism study. Let me just start by showing you what it is that I, I call an urban metabolism study or a material flow study, um, and then uh, I'll go through the five steps that you need to do. So let's start with the first study, which is supposed or is characterized to be as one of the first urban metabolism studies. That was back in 1965 by Abel Woolman, and he conducted the study on a hypothetical 1 million inhabitants US city. And as you can see here, what it did is to quantify some of the flows entering and exiting one city. Now, why do you do this quantification analysis? It's in order to provide keys or insights about how to reduce the environmental impact of that city. Since then, uh, numerous studies have existed and you can see them both in the academic world and in the consultancy world, uh, or even in the policy world. So let me just uh, jump to one of uh, the consultancy offices that are doing a lot of um, material flow analysis studies or circularity scans or urban metabolism studies. Over here you have Circle Economy from, from the Netherlands and you see a number of studies that they have carried out for numerous cities. What does it look like? Well, in, in general, it's a report and in the report you will uh, often see these type of diagrams, uh, these Sankey diagrams that I'll explain it into a future video what it is and how to do it. But in general, you have um, a report and you have a quantification analysis and these type of diagrams. Uh, their neighbors uh, right next by in Amsterdam uh, is metabolic and they have also done numerous urban metabolism studies or circularity studies for cities. Uh, over here you have, for instance, Charlotte in the US. Uh, and you see, once again, that's a report. Um, you see a number of uh, action points and you see one Sankey diagram here, uh, a quantification of flows. Um, lastly, over here, it was a study I did back in the days uh, for the urban metabolism of Brussels. So you see the, the region of Brussels and you see flows entering and exiting. And once again, it's a report where we also had a bunch of actions at the very end. So in case you want to learn more about what is an urban metabolism study, where they have taken place around the world, um, we invite you to go to our library website, so Metabolism of Cities Library. And over here, if you click on case studies, you will see a map with uh, all of the case studies of urban metabolism studies that exist uh, out there. So if you zoom in, for instance, uh, in Europe, in France, you have two of them over here. Um, and every time it tells you wh which one it is, who is the author, and once you click on the study, it gives you a bit more uh, insights uh, about what it is, where you can find it, what type of flows it has uh, analyzed, and where you can get the, the report. So you see here, you can find many, many studies depending where you live. Now let me, uh, now that I have, uh, you know, given you an introduction about what is an urban metabolism study, let me just give you the five steps you need to, to, to take if you want to carry out one yourself. All right, if we go over these five steps that you'll need to, to carry out these urban metabolism studies, or you can call them a material flow analysis study or circular, you know, circularity scan study, let's say, um, these five steps consist of first, first of all, defining the system that you want to analyze. So when you do a territorial metabolism study or a circular uh, scan study. What you do is you first, you know, define in space and time what it is you will be looking at. Uh, in the case of the previous uh, case, uh, you know, the, the examples I showed you, 
in the case of Charlotte, uh, in the US, well, it might be the city, it might be the region, it might be the metropolis, depending on what you're looking at. It could be also a neighborhood. You know, the spatial scale is uh, is up to you to define, but you need to define it. Um, oftentimes, you will define your system uh, boundary, your spatial system boundary, to where uh, there is more data. So it could be at an administrative scale, or it could be a statistical scale, or something like that. Then you need to define it in time. What is the year of reference for which you are um, analyzing your system? Well, most oftenly it's you know the the most recent year, but uh, it could also be the year for which you have more data. So it could be a census year, or it could be another year for which you you know that you most of your data align for. Because oftentimes you might find some data at for one year uh, for the energy flows and for water flows you might not find them. And so what you want is ideally one year for which you have all of your data aligned. Then in your system definition, you also say, what do you count? What do you account, right? Um, let's say one study could uh, be accounting all of the flows. Another one could look just at the end of the system, just the waste. The other one could look at, let's say, just energy flows. So it really depends, right? Uh, it could be, uh, it's up to you to say which of the flows and the processes are uh, within your accounting um exercise and which are without. Uh, this can also be, let's say you can have a black box, so you just look at what enters and what exits, but no idea what happens really inside your system. Or you can have, let's say, a gray box where you know some of the activities inside, but not all of them. Or you can really have a, a very detailed uh, and explicit um, system where you know all of the activities, all of the actors, all of the flows together. So that's the first step. You define what you measure, what's included, what's excluded, for what year you're measuring stuff, and what is your spatial scale for which you will be um, accounting for. The second step is the measurement of the flows, uh, per se. So what does that mean? Well, you need to start looking for data uh, to collect data out there, information, data sets, uh, maps, whatever uh, that is. Um, sometimes you measure it yourself, sometimes it's secondary data, sometimes it's literature data, sometimes it's estimations. So you need to measure all of the flows for which you have, um, you have said that you would include in your study, right, in step one. So step one, you say, what are all of the things that I need to measure? Step two, you start measuring them. Step three is what happens when you have some unknown quantities. So in most of the cases, you will not have all of the data there, right? So you will always have some unknown quantities, unknown, um, uh, you know, flows and all of that. So how do you get there? Well, there are many ways. Either you do it by, let's say, um, mass conservation equations. So if you look at uh, the method of Bacini and Bruner that they have the, the, the material flow analysis handbook. Over there you have a, a number of equations that you can resolve in order to find your, your unknown quantities. Or you can, uh, let's say, when you don't, you, you, you don't feel comfortable with this, you can always also downscale information from another um, spatial scale. Uh, or estimate it from a smaller scale and then add it up to your scale. So you start doing some estimations and calculations over there. So step two and step three are, are really together, let's say. Uh, the first one, you look for data. The second one is if you don't have data, try to, to figure out how to, uh, uh, you know, fill the, the gaps, the data gaps. Then step four is once you have all of your data, you start illustrating your flows. If you remember well, in all of the studies, you had these Sankey diagrams, these illustrations, these diagrams, where we saw the flows entering and exiting. We saw that they had different proportions. Uh, these are proportional to the, to the weight of the flows, to the mass of the flows. Um, or if it's not mass, it could be, you know, energy. Um, 
kilojoules or kilowatt hours or whatever. Uh, so you start illustrating uh, your your flows, your stocks, and all of that. Then what you do, you start interpreting what you have seen. So interpretation of flows means, well, I can clearly see from um, from my diagram that water is the flow that you know um, dwarfs all of the other flows, or that uh, most of my energy goes to, I'm making this up, um, to heat homes or to heat buildings, or that most of my CO2 emissions comes from transportation. So you start interpreting what you're seeing, right? I mean, you go from measuring all of the flows to start interpreting, um, you know, I have no extraction locally, but I import most of my flows. Therefore, my economy is very um, import um, dependent, let's say. Uh, so you start inter interpreting your data uh, and your, your figure. That's step four. And finally, you start providing recommendations or actions about how to optimize your system or how to uh, reduce the environmental impact of your system. So this could be, for instance, um, start reusing construction materials locally by having uh, a local um, storage space where you can, you know, um, deconstruct a building, then put all of the, uh, the materials there and reuse it to a new building or to a renovated building in the future. Or it could be, um, it could be, let's say, an agricultural practice, a local that has uh, no pesticides or something like that. Or it could be, you know, a, a very a niche activity where you uh, you take the, the waste from a brewery activity and you include it into, let's say, bread or cookies or something like that, or vice versa. All of the stale bread that is unsold by bakeries, you can reuse it for breweries, etc., etc. So you, you can have some recommendations of how to change uh, one system, one flow in particular, um, and this can be very micro or it could be much more, you know, meso or macro. So it could be a big policy. Uh, you you should uh, um, have lower uh, VAT for, you know, reused materials rather than new materials, etc., etc. So this is the part of recommendations. So these are the five main steps that you will see in most, um, you know, a material flow analysis or urban metabolism studies, you will see, uh, well, they, they define a method of calculation. This is often in the, in the system definition and the measurement processes. They tell you what they're going to measure. That's here. How they're going to measure it probably is here in measurement. Then they illustrate this synthetically in the illustration and interpretation. And at the end, there is an action plan, or there are recommendations in terms of policies and actions in order to change the system. So that is it for, for this video. In the next videos, we'll try to dive in into some other parts of this urban metabolism study, such as the illustrations. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to put them down below in the comments and let us know what you would like to see next in the next videos. Thanks a lot, and we'll speak soon. Cheers.